Hey. God bless you all. Invite and share. We're gonna do this quick on Pride. It's gonna be good. Invite and share. Invite and share. We're gonna have an unusual, unusual soap scope. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. God bless everyone. Hey, hey. Greetings from Reno. Greetings, greetings. Greetings. You know what? You know what you all? Should I do that, Holy Ghost? Okay. Hello, hello. Dr. Kalicia, I, I sent you the information, by the way. Praise God for Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Praise God for Reno. I see you on here. God bless everyone. This is going to be really, really good. Hello. Hello. How are we? God bless, God bless you all. Grace and peace from New York City. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. We got something really, really tripped out today. All right. Philly is in the building. All right, we're going to say a prayer for Ariel. I'm really stirred to really touch on this thing of pride. Okay, she's in the ER right now. Really, what is she on the ER from? What is she in the ER from? Do you know what she's in the ER from? Hey, hey, how you doing? Okay, you all, we're about to, I really want to do this thing on pride. And in order for us to do it on pride, I'm really going to have to lay some foundation. Um, let's release that prayer for Ariel right now. What's going on with, with, with her? You said kidney stones? Kidney stones? Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. How you doing? I promise you, you all are really going to enjoy what we're about to do. But let, let's say this prayer real quick because they're in the emergency room. Hey, Tokyo. Hey, Baton Rouge. Father, we just thank you for the sister that is in the um, in the emergency room that they just did a CT scan on. Father, I thank you that your eyes are in every place. So your eyes are even there in the emergency room right now. So, Father, we just touch and agree with what it is that you have spoken over her life from heaven in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord God that her kidneys will function properly in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you that even as she is in that room right now Lord you are positioning her even with the doctors even with the nurses Lord with the tech aides with the people that you desire to, to work on her behalf right now Lord I thank you that she is being nursed she is being restored to health in the name of Jesus Lord if there's any donor any anything going on like that Lord God um, that she needs I thank you, Lord God, that you are going to release that to her. I thank you that she will be a testimony. She will be able to say that the Lord healed me for you are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. So, Lord, we just even send that saving power even into that emergency room right now. In the name of Jesus, we lose blessings over her, Father. In Jesus' name, we say, be ye healed. Amen. Hallelujah. You all, it is something really, really different and unusual that we're about to do um, on this particular scope right now. Something really different and really unusual. And it is going to be on the subject of pride, okay? We're really about to go in on pride because I told you we're going in on the throne room. And one of the things about the throne room that will keep us out of the throne room is pride. So I hope everybody has invited and shared um, because I promise you, you're about to hear some stuff that's about to really trip you out right now. OK. All right. Amen. So I see what people are inviting and sharing. Um, I know a lot of us have heard things about pride. Um, a lot of us have heard a lot of things about pride. OK. Um, and, you know, we've been focusing on the throne room. So I just want to just start right here. All right. And I'm going to start from here. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 and 17. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, 
a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. Now, I won't go into the rest. I want to start with that first thing. Now, if you notice, the first thing that the Lord says that he hates is a proud look. Pride. Now, me personally, I would have thought the first thing he hated would have been lie. Lying. But why do you think he says pride first? Because pride is the thing that actually got Satan kicked out of heaven. Pride is the original sin. If you ever go to, I want you all to go to, um, if you get a chance, I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 14. Okay. Because this is very powerful as you said, um, um, what I'm going to tie this together with is our pride. God hates pride. And remember, hate is an intense dislike for something, but just how God hates pride, pride hates God. I'm going to say that again. Just that like God hates pride. Pride hates God. So when we're acting prideful, we are actually our actions are actually saying, God, I hate you. OK, and I'm going to show you how it shows that in the scripture. OK, so th this is not something that I'm making up. This is actually in the scripture. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. OK, it says in Isaiah 14, 13 through 14. And let me say this prayer real quick. Father, even we love you. And even as we are touching on a topic so sensitive as this, Lord God, this topic of pride is such a sensitive topic. But we know that pride is something that you hate. So, Father, we ask now that we would humble ourselves. Lord, may we be humble right now to receive what it is that you are saying from your throne concerning pride. Lord, I pray that the entrance of your word will bring light in our situation, Lord, and that it will set us free from any pride and any deception that we are walking in now, that we may be able to move into the ne next realm of revelation, that we may be able to move in the next realm of favor and promotion that you have for us. So our ears are open and our hearts are open to hear what it is that you have to say. Lord, we detach ourselves from any mindsets. Lord, everything that we know up to this point, Lord, we say we don't know it as we ought to know it. So we open ourselves to you now. Mm. Lord, I pray that you will help this word to be ministered in the way that you want it ministered. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so yeah, you know what? I was going to get to that. Now, check this out. Let's go to the root. With, with, and this is meditation. So if you all are saying, what does this have to do with soap scope? One of the definitions of meditation is study. OK, and so we're meditating on the word as we study. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. And it says, actually, I'm going to start at verse 12. Verse 12 says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Now, you notice how it says Lucifer, which was Satan's name when he was in heaven. He's not Lucifer anymore. He's Satan now. When he was in heaven, he was Lucifer. OK. And the Bible says, how art thou fallen from heaven? So it's showing Lucifer fell from heaven. So he was in a heavenly place. All right. And I'm using certain words to relate it to you and I, because you and I are in the heavenly place. But this is going to show you what made Lucifer fall out of heaven, fall out of the presence of God. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I want you to notice what Lucifer said in his heart, because pride starts in the heart. I want you to notice, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. If you notice, Lucifer was, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay. Whereas the opposite with him and Jesus was, Jesus was nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. So notice what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven, his pride. Pride is I will. Okay. I will ascend into heaven. And then notice 
not only ascend into heaven, he will exalt his throne above the stars of God. He said he's going to sit upon the mounts of the congregation. Now, how does this relate to pride? Pride is when you exalt yourself. Lucifer was exalting himself and we know he was exalting himself because he was saying, I will, I will. Hey, NFBG, I will, I will. And so through Lucifer or Satan trying to exalt himself on the level of God, this is what got him kicked out of heaven. And it's the same with you and I. When we are operating in pride, pride, pride will keep you from the presence of God. There's actually a scripture that shows that we're going to get to in a minute. OK, so that's the original sin. The original sin is that pride, because what does pride do? Pride puts us in competition with God. I'm going to say that again. Pride puts us in competition with God. If you notice, Lucifer's or Satan's pride put him in competition with God. So when you and I are being prideful and this might sting, look, this is for all of us. This is for me, too. When we're walking in pride, that means we're competing with God. We are competing with God himself. And if you notice, what does God say about that in James 4, 6? He resists the proud. Another word for resist is fight. When you're competing with something, you're fighting with it. So this is why he resists the proud. He fights the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Imagine getting in a fight with God. Do you know that when we're prideful, we're setting ourselves up to fight God? That's what we do. When we're walking in pride, we're literally putting our fist up and saying, I'm fighting you now, God. Come on, bring it on. I'm fighting you. Because I forget your way. My way is better. Now, let's let's go even deeper with this. I pray that you all are getting something. A lot of us hear that Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed because of homosexuality. But the Bible tells us differently. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 16. Remember, this is still Sotsko we're studying right now. Okay? Ezekiel 16, verse 49. It says... Sodom, Ezekiel 16, verse 49. Yeah, here we go. Come on now. Come on now. We going somewhere. It doesn't say, it, it says gay pride. You got to be, well, watch the devil. Look how the devil is tricky with that thing. Ezekiel 16, verse 49 says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. I want you to listen to what Sodom's iniquity was. Pride. It's the first thing he said pride fullness of bread and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters so nowhere in here does it say homosexuality is what brought Sodom down in this passage it says it was pride okay because see once pride comes pride exalts you and it puffs you up once it puffs you up, it begins to blind you to the ways of God. So now the only thing that you can see is a perverted way. So this is what opens the door for perversion is the pride. Ezekiel 16. This is why pride is so dangerous. All right. Now, I want to bring you to another scripture of how pride affects our relationship with Jesus. Go to John chapter 12. See, pride, pride is super dangerous. I just showed you that pride was the thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven. So nothing has changed. See, God hates the thing that got, because look what pride did. Pride literally tried to exalt itself against God. Pride basically says, I want to take over heaven. Think about this. God is love himself. But pride made Satan say, you know what? I hate you, love. I want to be over you. That's what pride did. I want to be over you. I want to put you out and be exalted over you. Love itself. This is why God hates pride. This is why pride is so dangerous because pride tried to take over heaven itself. Pride tried to conquer the one that we sit and pray to and say is good. Pride tried to conquer that. So when we are operating in the spirit of pride, we are operating in the exact same spirit that tried to conquer heaven. It tried to kill God. That's how dangerous pride is. Pride will try to murder God. 
Like are you, are you all really getting that revelation? It would try to murder God. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Verse 42 and 43. This is really going to trip you out. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. So it's talking about how the Pharisees, there were some Pharisees that believed in Jesus, but they didn't confess it publicly. Now I want you to see why in verse 43. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. So the reason they did not profess Jesus was because they 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 were more concerned with the things of man more than the things of God. They were more concerned with how men saw them. They wanted to be puffed up and exalted by men more than being puffed up and exalted by God. So as a result, this is what helped lead to Jesus being murdered. I want to show the correlation between pride and how pride hates God so much it will kill him. Now, maybe you didn't really get what I'm trying to say right there. Well, this part is going to bring it home. Go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. Now, all of us know this, this passage. This is a familiar passage. But I want to highlight something that's not talked about often when this passage is talked about. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 22 through 23, it says, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, said, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Now, what Peter is doing is Peter was rebuking Jesus because Jesus told him how he had to suffer all these things and then die and be raised again. Right. And so you would think Peter was doing something innocent. Right. Like, no, Lord, we're not going to let that happen to you. All right. But I want you to see what happened in verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. All right. So Jesus is now directly talking, not just directly talking to Satan. Satan, this is just anybody to Jesus. Remember, Jesus said he beheld Lucifer fall as lightning. Remember, Jesus said in the scriptures, he told the Pharisees how he saw Lucifer fall. He saw him fall. I think that was the Pharisees he was talking to. But there's a scripture where Jesus says how he beheld Lucifer fall. Right. Or Satan fall. And so this is the same Satan he's talking to. Jesus was there when Satan fell because of his pride. He saw the reason why he fell. He saw when Satan tried to exalt himself and when he got kicked out. So Jesus, when he's speaking to him, he's speaking to Satan in the original identity of who he is. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me. Now, I want you to pay attention to this last part. This is the key. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. He's it now. Another word for savor is like. You don't like the things of God. You like the things of man. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. It didn't say that Satan likes the things of the devil. It said he likes the things of man. The verse in um, John was John chapter 12, verses 42 through 43. This is Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verse 23. Okay. Wow, Dr. Khaleesi. Wow. So I want you to listen to this. Right. Right. Peep this. I'm going to say it again. Satan doesn't like the things of Satan. Satan doesn't like the things of hell. It didn't say Satan likes the demonic. Satan likes. So what makes Satan demonic then? He likes the things of man. Think about that. He likes the things of man. So when we walk in our fleshly stuff, Satan loves it. He's like, yes, this is what I'm on right now. He loves the things of man. And so in that verse that I just showed you in John, what made the Pharisees not want to profess Jesus? Because they loved the praise of man. Think about that for a second. So what are the things of man? All right. This is just some stuff to ponder before we meditate. What are the things of man? OK, what are the things of man? These things right here are the things that keep us away from the presence of God. All right. Now, Ephesians 2, 6 says we are in heavenly places. 
We just showed how what got Satan booted out of the heavenly place. I want you all to go to Isaiah 57 verse 15. I want to show you two things about the presence. Because remember, we're talking about the throne room, but this also has to do with meditation. Sometimes when we meditate, and, and this isn't to condemn anybody because this has happened to me too before. Sometimes when you meditate, you might be like, for some reason, this thing really isn't, I don't know. It's just really not sitting with me right now. I'm not really getting anything from it. So your flesh is going to tell you what? Oh man, this thing ain't for me. I'll wait till he does a scripture that I can really get. Well, there's a serious problem with that because it's the word that created us. This essence, this is supposed to flow out of us. Anything Jesus loves, we should love. Anything Jesus hates, we should hate. And he loves his word. Psalms 138 verse 2 says he magnifies it above all he names. So therefore, that means there's an area in our heart where we need to surrender more. We should be so sensitive that just like it says in Luke, this word shall burn in our heart. If we're not feeling that burning, there's another level of dying. We can do another level of surrender. But look at Isaiah 57 verse 15. This is a tripped out verse because this talks about God's posse. You know, God got a posse. He got an entourage. I want, I want to show you what God's click is. All right, let's look at God's click. It says, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity. I love it when the Lord talks like that. He like, look, I'm the high and lofty one and he's humble. So, man, like I want to get to that point. How, what thus said the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. Listen to this. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. So God's posse, you all, the people that he dwells with are those that are contrite and humble. The ones that are humble, that's who he says I dwell with. That's who I rock with. I rock with the humble cats. Said I don't rock with the, with the proud, with the puffed up people. Nah, we, we kick them up out of here because they be hating, okay? They be hating, all right? I rock with the humble ones, all right? Now, let me go a step deeper with the, with the hate, okay? With the hate because we just saw how Satan said, how the Lord told Satan, you don't like the things of God, you like the things of man, okay? You don't like the things of God, you like the things of man. And so, since he likes the things of man, he hates the things of God, okay? Satan hates the things of God, and I'm going to say it again, pride hates God. So when we're acting prideful, we're acting in a way that's saying, God, I hate you. I hate your way. I'm going to do this my way because I hate your way. Okay, we could be prideful in a lot of different ways. Pride goes a lot of ways. We could have religious pride. We could have a thing of, well, I know what I'm doing is wrong, but you know what? <laughs> Whatever. I know what I'm saying to this person is bogus right here, but you know what? Whatever. They're going to feel this thing. They should have never told me that. When we're doing that, you know what we're saying? God, I hate you. That's what you're saying. Man, that's deep. Give you a Selah moment on that. That's for all of us. This is not to beat anybody up. This is for me too. Okay? This is for me too. Mm. I want to I want to bring up the the um I want to bring up a definition of that word hate. The word hate you all. I got it written down. Hate means intense and passionate dislike. Loathe. It also means intense hostility. And aversion. Now listen to what Miriam Webster said, you all. Listen to this. It says intense hostility and aversion, usually deriving from, listen to this, usually deriving from fear, anger, or sense of injury. So the Miriam Webster Webster Dictionary is telling us that pride, I mean that that hate, I'm sorry, that hate comes from fear, hate comes from anger. And hate comes from sense of injury. That means when we when we get fearful, that opens up the door for hate or that opens up the door for pride because pride hates the things of God. So when we get fearful, when we have it, think about it. A lot of people, a lot of times when we walk in pride, it's to cover up some empty space that we have on the inside of us. It's to cover up an insecurity. So when we get fearful, we open the door for pride. 
Okay, because fear is basically saying that's right. Pride is a protective covering. And the Lord is saying, I have not given you the spirit of fear. So if he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, who has? Hmm. Say lie on that for a minute. All right. But then it says anger, anger. So anger opens the door for hate or for pride. We get so mad. And then remember, there's a scripture that says with pride cometh contention. With pride cometh contention. Mm. Now check this out. It says or sense of injury. A lot of times when we feel like we're hurt, somebody has hurt us. That could make us very prideful. This is what opens the door for the hard heart. A lot of times people leave the church, not because of what the whole church is doing, but maybe because of what one person did to them or maybe two people did to them. It could be 300 people in the church and we'll leave off of what two or three people did. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Maybe 10 people did something hurtful to you in the church, but the other 290 were cool. And then a lot of times it won't even be the pastor. I'm not saying, if, you know, um, I'm not I'm not saying it's concerning if the pastor is real bogus or something. But a lot of times it won't even be the pastor. It'll be a couple of members you ran into that were bogus. And because of that hurt, you know, the Lord never told you to lead a church in the first place. But our pride, we covered up our heart. And now our pride took over and pride, you all, makes us blind. It shows you. Think about this. If Satan really knew, if he really knew, like, his end, he would have never done what he did. Like, like, really think about that stuff for a second. If he knew that by him having Jesus killed, it was going to represent him being defeated. Do you think he would have really had Jesus killed? No. But guess what, you all? Satan is still operating in pride. Hello? Satan is still in pride. He's in pride. This is why he loves the things of man. So when we sit and we walk in pride, we are walking in hate towards God. We are saying, God, I hate you. Hmm. That's a strong word, but it's so true. God, I hate you. That's what we do when we're prideful. You know what I'm saying? It's not no, I'm being prideful, but God knows my heart. Yeah, he does know your heart. He knows that we're hateful. And he stays far away from that. I want to show you a scripture, you all, that's really going to bring some revelation to the depression. If anybody out there is depressed right now, this word is really going to help set you free right now. Amen, Dr. Khaleesi. Oh, we about to really go there now, for real. Proverbs 29, verse 23. I want you all to look at Proverbs 29, verse 23. And I never saw this scripture like this until I went and looked it up. You know? Yeah, amen. Look, I'm doing some stuff on pride. Hey, that's okay. We about to just stay on. We, we about to get set free from all of that. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Proverbs 29, verse 23. It says, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Now, when you look up that word low, the word low means humiliate. So pride will lead to humiliation. But listen to this. In the Jacenius Hebrew lexicon, do you know what that word low means? It means depression. It means to be depressed. I'm going to say that again. That word low right there in the Hebrew lexicon means to be depressed. So in other words, this scripture is saying a man's pride shall bring him to depression. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. A man's pride shall bring him to depression. Pride leads to depression. You know what we you know what we need to do? Do you all know that emotions, that God has emotions? God has emotions, you all. And so every emotion out here comes from either the Lord or it comes from Satan. So think about this. Satan is the most depressed being in creation. There is no one more depressed than Satan. Like, think about that. Because there's no one more prideful than Satan. Satan is depressed. You think Jesus is depressed? You know what? I was telling um, somebody the other day. We were watching um, the visual Bible, right? 
And in this visual Bible, what I love is they show Jesus happy. Y'all notice on them, a lot of religious movies, if you notice, Jesus isn't really happy on there. They show Jesus like he kind of depressed. Because why? Because they're looking through the lens of their eyes. They were like, man, it must have been hard. Like for Jesus to have to go through all this, he had to have this so serious monotone face. Do you know that one of the definitions for the word blessed is happy? I'm going to say it again. One of the definitions for the word blessed is happy. So who is more blessed than Jesus? Come on. Jesus was happy. Matter of fact, the Bible showed us the times where he got filled with with anguish. We see those times. Those times are highlighted. Why are those times highlighted? Because that wasn't his usual demeanor. When he was sweating drops of blood, that was not his usual demeanor. OK, when he got stirred up and started whipping the people in the church, I mean, whipping, uh, overturning the tables and whipping the money changers, that was not his usual demeanor. Jesus was happy. He was blessed. He had a happy spirit and he was humble. He was humble. So depression comes from Satan. Depression is from the pit of hell and depression is linked with pride. It's linked with pride. I don't know how to do it. If somebody could put this on YouTube, I honestly don't know how to do this stuff. I really don't. You know what? But I need to, maybe that's the area of pride I'm walking in and I need to get delivered from that. Amen. All right. That's one way to defeat pride, you all, is for you to say everything that you go in and study. I wasn't planning on doing this um, just this quick, but let, I want to do this. I want us to go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. Amen. Yes, yeah, Sonia. Yes, Sonia. Please put this up and put pride underneath it for me. Please. God bless you. Thank you so much. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. And as you're turning to it, I want to let you all know that everything that I say on any of these scopes is because I've personally done it or I'm doing it right then. Okay? So. I've been studied, studying on pride just for myself. And this isn't the first time I've checked out stuff on pride. But I'm telling you, you never get to a point in the Lord where you feel like you got it all. The moment you do, you're in pride. The moment you sit there and say, oh, yeah, I know that already. Mm -mm. No, you don't. Because the Bible says don't let any man think he knows something as he ought. All right. Let's let's go. Let's 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 look at this right here. Ephesians three, verse 10. Now, this is going to really trip you out. Ephesians 3 verse 10 says to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. All right. The manifold wisdom of God. Hey, Steph, we've been going in on this pride thing. Somebody said they're going to put it up on YouTube. So whatever part you miss, you could you could check it on out. OK, so check this out. You all. Ephesians 3 verse 10. Do you know that that word manifold? Oh, wow. Hey, that's what's up. Do you know that word manifold? It means multiplied or numerous. Okay, I'm going somewhere with this. The word manifold in Ephesians 3 verse 10 means multiplied or numerous. The Bible says that God's wisdom is manifold. So let me make this, let me put this in plain English for you. If God's wisdom is multiplied, that means he has wisdoms of wisdom. OK, he has wisdoms, plural of wisdom. That means every single ounce of wisdom you get, there are wisdoms, plural, inside of that wisdom. All right. So if there are wisdoms inside of wisdom, that means it's going to take you eternity and then some to understand what what it is that he's releasing. Now, how does this relate with pride? Because God's word, every single ounce, every single word of his word has the manifold wisdom inside of it. That means there is manifold wisdom inside of the word the. <laughs> he didn't say in certain parts of my word. It, it's, it's in his word, period. All right. So the manifold wisdom. So that means any scripture that you read, regardless, I don't care if you read this scripture eight billion times. Guess what? There's more wisdoms inside of that. 
there's revelation that's going to be released 5,000 years from now that you and I can't see right now. All right. And the ones that can say it better than me. And I can't remember the scripture off the top of my head, but you all can go to this. And it's the scripture where it talks about the beings in heaven are saying, holy, 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 thou art holy, who was and is and is to come. Now, think about this. They've been saying that for eternity. Why do they never get tired of saying, holy, 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 thou art holy? You know why? Because they're humble. And so they're constantly getting a new revelation of holy. They're constantly getting a new revelation of holy. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the ones that are saying it, it says their bodies are covered with eyes. And they said they have eyes inside and out. So they're constantly new eyes being opened inside and out of them. And that shows us how we look in the realm of the spirit. Okay, now I want you to look at another scripture. And like I said, I'm just laying this foundation for pride. Psalms 31 verse 20 is a scripture that shows how pride will keep us from the presence of God. Remember what we said earlier, pride hates God, hates God. When we are being prideful, we're saying, God, I hate you. That's what we're saying. Okay. God, I hate you. When we walk in a prideful way, when we think prideful, when we act prideful, we're saying, Lord, I hate you. Okay, because we just saw the correlation with that. And we also just saw the correlation between pride and depression as well. Psalms 31 verse 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. So notice, where does the Lord hide from pride? In his presence. In other words, Pride can't be in the presence of God because you and I saw what happened in the beginning when pride tried to come in the presence of God. Pride came through the form of Lucifer and the Lord kicked him out of his presence. We can't bring pride into the presence of God. It just won't come. It just won't come. We have to humble ourselves before we come into the presence of God. Humbling ourselves is what gets us in the presence of God. But in order to get the fullness of whatever it is, we have to surrender. I'm going to tell you all something personal because I'm just I'm just flowing with the spirit right now. OK, let me let me be I'm keeping straight real. I don't want no room for no pride on this broadcast in any way. So it start with me, the person delivering this. Let me tell you this. And then I'm going to tell you how to humble yourself. I'm going, I'm going to tell you right now through a practical way. When I got saved, one of the things that I had to do in my mind, in my heart for me, was I had to say, you know what? Everything that I think I know about the Lord, I don't know. I'm going to say that again. Everything I think I know about the Lord, I don't know. You know why I had to say that? Because when I was growing up, I grew up just like a lot of other black people. I grew up in the church, right? Grew up in the church. I was going to church, you know, on Sundays or whatever. I didn't really get nothing from it. What I mean, get nothing from it, I mean this. I learned all the ways and the rules and, you know, the, all of that stuff, but I didn't have a relationship. You get what I'm saying? My relationship wasn't personal. My relationship was through my parents. You know what I'm saying? And so I learned all of these ways and things. And so I had the first thing that I had to acknowledge was, you know what? All of the scriptures that I've had to memorize and all that other stuff, the way that I think I know them, I really don't know them. I don't at all because I don't really know you. I had to humble myself. All right. And I'm telling you all that the one of the easiest ways to humble yourself, we're going to get into the practical ways, is first of the mindset of being anything I know. Because somebody looked that scripture up for me. That's a scripture where it says, let any, um, um, don't let anybody think he knows anything as he ought. That's a scripture. Somebody could look that up for me, please. All right. So when you go before God, that's one of the first things you want to say is even if you know that the Lord told you something. All right, Lord, I know that you told me this, but Lord, I'm also open to you just in case I'm missing something. If there's something else, I, I don't profess. Look, this teaching I'm doing on pride. I know that that it's manifold. So I know I'm not even scratching the surface on this. I know it's stuff that I'm not even seeing right now. First Corinthians eight, verse two. Thanks, Steph. 
I want us to look at 1 Corinthians 8 2. This is something, this is a way to walk. Matter of fact, this is what we're going to meditate on. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 2 says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Mmm. That's good. We're going to meditate on that. Another practical way of humbling yourself is fasting. Why do you think our flesh hates fasting? Because our flesh hates to be humbled. Because Satan hates to be humbled. Satan hates the thing, uh, Satan hates the things of God and he loves the things of man. All right? We have to start making these things practical. All right? Let, let me get even more let me get even more practical. You know, look, and and, I'm, and I'll just be transparent. What's what's one of the things of man? Is coming together, partying, and getting drunk. When I was partying and getting drunk, that's that's you know that's tradition. You know, people say, "Hey, nothing wrong with that." You know what I'm saying? You're just having a good time. That's the things of man. Guess who loves that? Satan. Satan in the back, like, "Yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about." Come on, let's get it in, Phil. For real. See, we don't look at it like that. We look at it like you know this religious way of Satan got to be all spooky and ooh. No, no, no. He loves the things of man. He loves it. You know what I'm saying? He loves it when somebody says something to me and I want to get in my flesh and I start um, um, snapping on them and cussing them out. Satan loves that. He loves the things of man. That's the things of man. Me responding to people cussing them out. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know what? I'm going to get them a piece of my mind. I'm going to tear them off. Satan loves that. He loves. And guess what? What he loves, God hates. And what God hates, Satan loves. So when I'm responding in that way, I'm saying, God, I hate you and I hate your way. Not I just don't like your way right now. I hate your way. I'm not making these. Words. That's why I took you all through these scriptures so you can see it for yourself. OK, this is some strong stuff we're talking about. And so James four, verse six says, God resists the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. If you want to grow in revelation and walking in the word, if you want to grow in the things of God. All right. It tells you right there. He gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. You want to know another word for resist? Fight. God fights the proud. So when we get prideful, God will fight you. Think about that. God himself will fight you. That's a scary thing when you think about it. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like you putting on some boxing gloves, getting ready for a fight. And they like, man. Oh, yo, so who you fighting today, God? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we doing. We fighting God. When we are being prideful, we are literally fighting God. Oh, Jesus. And this is why he hates pride, because pride is the thing that tried to kill God. That's, that's why he had us start off with, with um, that scripture in Isaiah. That was the second scripture because pride tried to fight God himself. Satan was literally looking at God. Y'all remember he was the covering cherub. He saw God in all of his glory. How wicked is that to see God in all his glory and still want to squash it out? That's what pride did, you all. Pride. It wasn't anything deep or spooky. It was pride. Pride is the thing that stops revivals. Pride is the thing that has led to denominations. Pride is the thing that leads to contentious divisions. I won't go in on all of that right now, but pride. So we are to be diligent against pride. We want to hate what God hates and we want to love what God loves. All right. There's a whole chapter on pride. If you ever want to know some of the characteristics of pride. Read Job chapter 41. That whole chapter was on pride. And why is it? Why does the Lord want us to learn about this? So we can just be puffed up and say, oh, I know all of this stuff. No, not at all. So we can access the presence of God even more. So we can be even more intimate with the Lord. This is why. Because he resists the proud but give grace to the humble. That means more revelation because you're in his presence. That means more freedom. That means more joy. We, are, we already saw the connection with pride and depression. So if pride leads to depression, then guess what? Guess what the opposite of that is? 
happiness. <laughs> Humility brings happiness. One of the surefire ways, I'm telling you, there's a there's a scripture that says, I humble my soul with fasting. But fasting isn't the only way to humble yourself. I would suggest to everybody to have a lifestyle of fasting. I would suggest you fast one day a week. I'm just keeping it real with you. Your flesh gonna hate it. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe you work out your things with God. Maybe you might say, you know what? I fast once a month or something. Whatever the, whatever that thing is, ask the Lord. But I'm going to tell you this. Your flesh ain't trying to ask the Lord when to fast. I can tell you that right now. You know what I'm saying? And so we're going to release this right now. I didn't know this was going to take this long, but I wanted to lay this foundation. It's been really strong in my heart. I told somebody earlier I was going to scope on it. This thing has been like strong. And the Lord wants us to know this because this is what... This is what keeps us from the presence of God. Another way of humbling yourself is when you worship. All right. When you worship, think about this. How many times have you been in a service and sometimes you think about what the other person might say? So you don't really want to lift your hand. You don't want to look foolish. You don't want to look foolish. So you be like, nah, I ain't going to do all that because I might look crazy. You have to now accurately discern who's saying that. Is Satan saying that? Or is the spirit of God saying that? Like for real. See, Satan is real. It's real subtle. That's pride. Pride to tell you, I don't, I don't, nah, you're going to look crazy, man. Don't do that. You're going to look crazy, bro. Nah, don't go up here and start jumping around for the Lord. Dude, you're going to look crazy, man. What are you doing? That's pride. All right? You think they doing that in heaven? You think they being reserved in heaven? You know what I'm saying? Like it's literal elders. They are taking their crowns off and throwing them on the ground. And then the moment they throw them on the ground, they pick them back up and they throw them down again. Now, if that's me and you, wouldn't that look foolish? Wouldn't that look foolish? You'd be like, look at this dude. This dude look crazy. This dude got this big old gold crown on. He keep throwing it down, picking it up and throwing it down again. What is his problem? But that's what they doing in heaven. That's what they doing in heaven. Amen. So we're going to meditate. I didn't plan on meditating on this scripture, but let's meditate on 1 Corinthians 8 verse 2. And if you can release the hearts, you know, I don't usually say that, but I'm saying release them because if there's not a certain amount of hearts released, it begins the broadcast to cut off. And I'm looking at my time right now. So 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 2, it says, if, it, if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Oh, and, and this hit my spirit. I got to say this one last thing. I'm just flowing with Jesus, y'all. Look, do not be discouraged if when you are reading the word or studying the word, you start falling asleep or getting sleepy. It's okay. All right? It's okay. And why do I mean that it's okay? It used to happen to me too. But I do want to tell you what it is. It's pride. Now, are you going to say, well, Brother Philip, you mean to tell me anytime I'm sleepy is pride? No, sometimes we're genuinely sleepy. But let me tell you how you know when it's when it's pride. If you're wide awake, you full of life and everything. And then the moment you sit and look at the word, you start getting sleepy. But then when you stop looking at the word, 